Welcome to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. 30 days, 30 experts, 30 marketing niches. Brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. More leads, more sales, and more revenue for your small or medium-sized business. Click findnewrevenue.com to learn more. Now here's your host, Howard Walpoff. Welcome back to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. I'm Howard Walpuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, this is brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. Today, I'm very excited. We're having a great conversation about social media. I know all of you think you know, you're experts, but I really have an expert here that, that tells you and, and has a really great experience on, on how to make everything more effective for you. Uh, her name is Julia Bramble. And she, again, if you have a chance, LinkedIn is such a great tool, but this is by far one of the best descriptions I've ever seen of anyone, what they do on LinkedIn. I want to just really quote it because it's, it, it, it really hits the, 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 the message home. She makes it simple for you to get results from social media and online marketing. She's the unique combo of PhD forensic scientist, empathic communicator, and spectacularly popular presenter. And she really has a skill of effective Facebook ads, Instagram stories, and, and Twitter chats, a real all-around understanding of how to make social media effective for you. Julia, thank you for joining us today. Oh, there, there we are. Thank you so much for inviting me. Honestly, I'm delighted to be here. And, and thank you for my intro as well. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure, and, and, and thank you. I, I, I love what I'm able to share with everyone with this, but I'm a sponge. I love understanding more and more that helps me as a marketer. So I'm, I'm very excited about the, the conversation we're going to have. And but my, my first question to you really is, how did you get started? Everyone has their own path into becoming a, a, an under, someone who understands social media, but how did you get to where you are right now? How did you all get started? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, um, mine is maybe a bit of an unusual story because I was in forensic science, as you've read from my profile, mm -hmm. but the organization that I was working for was a government organization and things changed and it could no longer continue in its state. So they were letting people go and eventually they closed down. But I left while I could still get some redundancy money, but I'd always wanted to um, work around my family rather than be employed by somebody else. So I started thinking very seriously about setting up on my own, but never having run a business before, I didn't want to just like jump into something. So I was looking into franchises. So I ended up being on the email list of lots and lots of different franchise organizations. And, and one of those, or quite a few of them actually, were also into small businesses and marketing and stuff like that. So I ended up learning about small business very quickly, very intensely, but also starting to become aware of the fact that there was this major new player in terms of small business marketing, which was social media. Now, at the time, I was a mum of, well, I still am a mum of six, but my youngest was one. So I hadn't really had time to like delve into social media properly. But my daughter at that time was 13 and was nagging me to get a Facebook account. So I started seeing all this stuff in my email about small business and marketing. And, and there was her going on about wanting a Facebook account. And the two just kind of collided in my world. So I had a look at it, started realizing what their power really was and heard about small businesses, you know, maybe being able to make the most of this because this was very early days and thought, you know what, this could really be something. So I went on whatever training there was available at the time, which wasn't a lot. And um, I was hooked and I, I took it from there basically. And that was nearly 10 years ago now. So yeah, it was very different back then. Very different back then, indeed, and, and time flies. That uh, that such a, a change has happens on a, on a yeah. regular basis. But it's amazing to think about what even what Facebook looked like, much less how uh, people interacted with it back then. Yeah, totally. Very, very different. The biggest change I think is actually in the mindset of people using social who aren't businesses. In the beginning, I remember, especially on Twitter, there was quite a lot of resistance to businesses actually going on there and being on there. And there were people talking about marketers ruining it all the time. And, and they kind of didn't want to engage that much with businesses. Whereas now, of course, it's commonplace. And, and we know, for example, on Instagram, that the majority of people actually follow businesses on Instagram and enjoy interacting with them. So, yeah, very different. And some of the conversations really can be the, the more entertaining ones on, uh, with, with some creative companies that really do 
care for how they interact with people on social media. Uh, I, I'm one of, of thousands who have these great stories about interacting positively and when you've been challenged, be, be sending your message on, on Twitter and, and I remember an yes. airline responded to me with an issue and, and uh, yeah. I'm actually with the, my local gas station right now from their corporate uh, social media people. Absolutely, and, and it really, it's such an opportunity for brands to actually get out from behind that corporate grayness, isn't it, and actually behave like human beings so they can step outside of their box and actually have those very human interactions, which of course we know is what draws people in in the first place. That's really going to, it's going to pay dividends for them down the line. So yeah, it's a fantastic opportunity for them even if it is a negative comment. And I think the, the corporates are kind of waking up to that, but I think the small businesses are still having trouble with being a little bit scared about having those negative comments coming through on social. Well, a lot of it is because, for one, yes, anything negative will be very scary because a lot of people don't know how to respond to it. But small businesses, yeah. especially on the smaller side, are trying to do it all by themselves. And this is what I deal with on a daily basis. You, you have to yeah. have the right strategy for your social media because if you're build, if you're building a house and you're up on the roof and someone has a has something a message you can't message that person right then and there uh, at the very least for risk of falling off the roof but you don't have to, the time to 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 really give the right type of response to it so you really have to have people helping you in the right way to do that yeah very true or at least have have the basics of a contingency plan in place so that maybe you've thought about you know, what would you do if, or what would you say if, so that, as you say, if you are literally just up on a roof and you have to race down, you've probably got something that you could put out and send at least to take the next step and show that you do actually care. But yeah, I, I do like that analogy. <laughs> and, uh, but you, you've had, you've, you've worked with different types of companies and, and you really, you, you have different strategies for Facebook ads and Instagram stories and Twitter chats. So what, what, what are things that, that companies gravitate to you with you? What do they gravitate to with you? And, and how does that seem to interact with what their needs are as a, as a business? Yeah, very interesting you should ask that because it really does depend on the business. But I do find that a lot of businesses really love the idea of Facebook ads because they love the idea that they don't necessarily have to be on social 24 seven, you know, the Facebook ad can take some of the strain for them and also put them back in control. So they can actually control, you know, who sees their content and how often they see it rather than being at the mercy of the algorithms. So people do gravitate towards that, but they also get put off at the same time because they think that they've got to spend a lot of money or Facebook ads have got to be really complicated because we see these gurus out there all the time going on about how complex Facebook ads are. And if you haven't got a thousand dollars to as your budget, then there's no point you even getting started and all that sort of stuff, which I completely disagree with. And you can do Facebook ads very cheaply and very effectively. So yeah, businesses are definitely, they love the idea of Facebook ads, but they do very often need some help getting started and actually working out a very simple sort of repeatable process they can use with Facebook ads. And then the other side is, um, regardless of the platform really, I find that businesses really want help creating content that's going to be effective out there on social. And it's a conversation that personally I have over and over again on social with loads of different people. Just social these days just seems to be filled with fluff from businesses. Businesses have been told somewhere along the line that they've got to sort of keep themselves uh, they've got to keep awareness going of themselves. You know, they've got to keep top of mind in their audience's eyes. So they should forever be posting some sort of content. And because of that, this, there's this drive to create content. And, and everywhere we're seeing people selling content planners and pre-made templates and goodness knows what else because the thought of creating content all the time is, is doing people's heads in. Um, whereas actually what we probably need to do is to take a step back and actually think about how we can create content that is actually going to get us results as a business and isn't just going to add to the noise out there. Because I personally believe that we've all got a bit of a responsibility to not just like flood the airwaves with loads of stuff just for the sake of it. 
So I do find businesses finding it very difficult to get that balance in terms of creating content that's going to actually get them results versus this, this thing that they've got, that they've got to be, you know, posting six times a day or whatever else it is. So working through that with them is very often, very often the starting point, actually. They say, you know, we don't know what to post. We're stuck. You know, how can we actually get results? They may very well be posting stuff and spending lots of time on social, but not actually seeing any results. So it's really stripping it back to a workable strategy. And that's very true. There's a lot of, you'll see the same regular things posted by different companies and uh, they're, they have that strategy, even though there's no likes and no comments, they're going to keep on doing it. And it does take that right person to express them. You need to strip down and take that uh, step back to see what you can do to be more effective. And that really, yeah, gets, absolutely. And it gets back to, back to the, the main question that we're asking here with the right strategies for companies. So, so what would you say is your number one strategy that's really well working well for you and your clients to achieve the marketing goals? It's a combination. It's really helping clients understand how social works. Because you wouldn't believe the number of people that I talk to who, for example, don't realize that there's an algorithm that's actually controlling what their audience sees. You know, the average small business owner doesn't have that level of understanding necessarily. And even smaller marketing teams in bigger companies don't realize this. So it's part of it is a little bit of education and then it's working with, it's working with the social media platform. So it's understanding what they're about and working with them. Um, you get lots of people out there saying, Oh, you know, how can we hack the algorithm, you know, and, and how can we break it and all this sort of stuff. Whereas the social media platforms have got their reasons for how they work. Mm -hmm. And the reasons generally are to give the audience that are on those platforms the best experience they can. Because then of course those social media platforms have potentially got the right number of eyeballs for when they run ads and, and they get their revenue. If they, if the people on there don't like the experience they're getting, then they're not going to be there and it's not going to work for any businesses, including the platform that we're actually trying to use. So it's definitely working with that social media platform and understanding how it works. And every social media platform has got an algorithm in place now. And generally, the algorithms are all based around what is going to give the best experience for the human beings who are coming to social media in the first place. So it's really, for most businesses, it's really thinking about putting themselves into their audience's shoes, thinking about why the people who they would like to interact with, why are they on social in the first place, and then trying to give them some of what they're there for in the first place in their content and in their interaction with them. So thinking about, for example, I've worked with quite a few vets, veterinary practices recently. So I've said to them, you know, your audience who are online, they're not all going to be in the same state at the same time. Some of them may have had a really hard day and they just want to go on social and they want to relax. So you might show them some funny content or, you know, something that's a little bit lighthearted. That would be great. Someone else might be on social and in the back of their mind, actually, their dog is losing weight or gaining weight or generally, you know, being quite lethargic. And actually, if you post something that gives them some tips about that exact condition, then that might potentially draw them in to finding out more about you. Or, you know, the person that's on social might literally just be browsing. And if you happen to post something about something that's going on in the local community, because you are a local business after all, then that might catch their attention and they might therefore investigate you and find out a little bit more about your business. So it's really thinking about creating content that's going to potentially attract those people in the first place and then adding into the mix, of course, content that's going to potentially encourage them to take the next step with that business. Maybe to click across to their website or to download something or to watch a video and ultimately start them on that customer journey. But the number one strategy is really, really, really trying to put themselves into their audience's shoes because the number of errors, I suppose, or challenges that I see people struggling with are for the most part fixed by taking yourself out of your business 
and, and looking at everything in a very business centric um, way and putting yourselves into your audience issues and looking at life from that angle. But added into that, of course, we do have to be very, very aware of the algorithms and what they're doing for us. And every single social media platform at the moment, the algorithm is going to be largely based on engagement. So it's going to be based on how much engagement you can actually attract back to your content. Therefore, we've got to be asking for it and we've got to be posting the right sort of content. But also how much you are actually going out there engaging with other people. How much are you going out there on Instagram, for example, finding profiles of people that you might want to interact with and actually engaging with their content? Or are you going out onto Twitter and are you actually responding to tweets that are put out by people who've potentially got a network of people that would be great for you to be interacting with? You know, how strategic are you being and how engaging and proactive are you being with other people's content? And that's a massive thing that I don't think enough businesses are doing enough of. I think massive is the right word because that really was a, you just provide a full blueprint for how companies should look <laughs> out for their vision for themselves and how as people are seeing them from the, from the other side. And uh, those that can master this blueprint will be the ones that really are mastering uh, the communication on social media. So uh, I thank you so much for such a, an amazing answer to that question. No, oh, you're so welcome. Yeah, I couldn't really give just like one, one piece because it is, like you said, it is that, that total equation. It's that, that full 360 that we have to think about. But then with a little sprinkle on top, of course, of using words and, and gestures online that would actually welcome people in rather than alienating them and remembering that everybody can see how we are actually acting online and it's not just the content that we share that is going to be viewed and judged, I guess, but it's also how we are behaving out there. So just keeping an awareness of that ticking over as well. And it's so very important. And it, it, show, it can show the fun side of a company and the serious side of a company too, and, and depending on how you uh, yeah. utilize that with, with video, with, with GIFs, with, with, with your actual words, and, uh, and really the, 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 the way you structure your content. So it really paints a, a really good picture to, to, uh, for how businesses focuses themselves. So, th so thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And we do need to remember, of course, as you've just alluded to, to bring in that factor or those factors that make you different from the others in your sector, try and weave that in. As you've said, you might be a company that really does provide a lot of lighthearted content. That's part of your brand persona, to use that marketing term. Or you might be a company that does tend to, to share very edu educational content. But we do need to see some a different side to you as well, that human side. But we also want to know why you're different from everybody else out there. And it's so very key and so very important. And, and so, Julia, thank you so much uh, for joining us and, and sharing this really this, this amazing blueprint. If you, you are a business owner and you've been listening to this, I'd play this over a few times and take a lot of notes because th this really gives you a direction. And if you've not understood what it was said, then uh, reaching out to someone like Julia Bramble is, is definitely the, uh, the direction that you need to go. So to do that, Julia, what's the best way for people to get in contact with you if, if they would like the guidance for this, this grand plan that you've, uh, you've really uh, opened your eyes on? Yeah, thank you. I would love to help. Um, you can, my email is julia at bramblebuzz.co.uk or I'm all over social uh, at Julia Bramble, so I'm very easy to find there. And my website is bramblebuzz.co.uk also. So whichever way suits you best. All right. Well, perfect. Well, Julia, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I truly appreciate it. I know that people watching it are, are definitely going to appreciate uh, the, the entirety of this interview. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for joining us today. This was another great piece of information. Uh, I, I, I would suggest watching this over at least once uh, to, to make sure you got everything out of this one. But uh, we'll have more 30 Days of Marketing Mavens brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. Go out and have a great day today, and we'll see you the next time.